Okay, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Outpost by W. Michael Gear. So this is book one in Michael Gear's six-book series called Donovan. And I've got the five, first five, but the book six hasn't come out yet, but you see I've got the first five books, Outpost, Abandoned, Pariah, Rec Unreconciled, and Adrift. Each one has a great cover by Steve Stone. You know we always review the covers first because I love graphic design and cover illustration. And Steve Stone has done a great job on all of these books. This is a book of a starship the inside of a starship with a pile of bones. Great wraparound. This is published by Daw Books, which published um, W. Michael Gear's first ever seven or eight science fiction novels. In fact, I have them here. In fact, since we're talking about that, I have met W. Michael Gear. I have most every book he's written, including the collaborations he did with his wife, uh, Kathleen O'Neill Gear. But he signed all my collection of books. You know I name drop like a motherfucker, and I ain't gonna apologize for that, but I've got all of the Michael Gear science fiction novels right up there. And then I've got all of his collaborations with his wife right here, like The People of the Wolf, um, all of those right there. So I've got quite a collection of uh, W. Michael Gear books. One of my favorite writers, so is his wife, Kathleen M. O'Neill Gear. They're great. Well, so anyway, I launch into this Donovan series, which is going to be six books, five of which I already own. I launch into this series, and I'm like, holy shit, this thing is great. These books, this book anyway. Oh, Lord have mighty, Lord almighty, Lord have mercy. I'm so, I'm so amazed by the book, I don't even know the saying. Is it Lord... Almighty, or Lord have mercy, or Lord have mighty. I don't know, but this book is super hot, fly on fire, dope. I loved everything about it. I can't tell you how much I... W. Michael Gear is one of my favorite writers of all time, and he has outdone himself with this. I absolutely loved this. It's Donovan. What is Donovan? It's a planet of horrors. It is like... People have, are discovering, you know, the people have left Earth and they're discovering new planets. And I'm telling you, not every planet we discover is going to be nice. Some of them are going to be horror shows. And Donovan is one such planet. It's eight, 38 light years from Earth. It uh, circles a sun named Capella. And we, right from the get-go, we get a scene about Talina, who's one of the... Um, surviving people of those so people came to donovan to set up a community and to mine donovan for its resources well donovan is a is an entity unto itself the plant life is poisonous every creature that lives there is just a nasty brutal grim bloody killer and th th there's not many people left in fact it's the outpost is the only thing that's left and there's only about 300 or so people left on this planet and uh, they think they've been abandoned by the corporation that sent them there from Earth. There's a corporation that, you know, mines these planets for their resources. And uh, they think they've been abandoned because nobody has been to visit them in 30-some-odd years. Or well, maybe it's like 15 years. I can't remember. Anyway, Talina is one of the um, sort of leaders of this little community, and she is out hunting a Quetzal. Because a Quetzal is one of the evil creatures on the planet and uh, that kills people. And uh, the Quetzal snuck in to the village and stole the baby and ate it. You know, the Quetzal ate your baby. 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 Anyway, Allison is the mother of the baby. And that's what people are like. The Quetzal ate your baby. And uh, so they're out hunting the Quetzal that ate the baby. And, um... You don't want to mess with these Quetzals. That's the point of the opening chapter is this planet is brutal. It sucks to live on this planet. 
When are we going to get provisions from the corporation? When are the people from Earth going to remember us? And um, that's kind of what's that's kind of what's hanging over this this place is have we been abandoned? When the last it's been a long time since last contact. Well, then suddenly they 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 they, they see a ship, a starship, uh, approaching, and they're like, oh my god. And they can feel the anxiety because they're like, is this going to be good or is this going to be bad? Aboard the ship. And then we get to, um, you know, because they don't know what what the Earth people are going to, they're, they're going to be like, are they going to come here and see that we failed to establish a colony here and just wipe us out? Or are they going to rescue us? I mean, what's going to happen? And then we get perspectives of the people aboard the ship. And that's cool because now we got two different types of perspectives the Donovan village and then the starship people. And on the starship, they are there because a string of about five or six starships prior to that had been sent to the Donovan planet. They just went missing. So something's up. It, it wasn't as if the corporation or the earthlings had left the Donovan just out there on its own. They had been attempting to send ships to them but they didn't and supplies but those ships have gone missing so the ship that's approaching now is called the Toralon, and uh there's an investigator on there a string uh, they're invest like they're they're there not only to see if donovan has still got people on it but to also investigate those missing ships and they are under the impression that the people of donovan have probably done something to those ships anyway so that sets up a tense meeting because when they come down when they do kind of come down from their ship into the uh, outpost of donovan you know the ship is full of characters all of their own you know um it's full of uh you know lawless people it's full of uh, army people it's full of stowaways and castaways um people running from the law marines it's got all sorts of people so in the meeting when the donovan people and the and the starship people finally have their meeting. It's a meeting of different factions comprised of intense feelings, of curiosity. Like, because the people on the starship, they've been away from home for a long time. It doesn't I mean they're not just light speeding out there. They're, this is a long journey they've taken. So they have been cooped up in a starship with a limited amount of people for a while. The people on Donovan have been cooped up on Donovan with eliminated people. And now they've got, now they've both doubled their... Uh, the amount of people that they're around and it just it's very it's filled the whole interaction is filled with intense curiosity distrust anger even lust and romance as you would imagine when you get a new group of people there um and then the story is like who's gonna win who's gonna who's gonna take over the planet donovan are the people that live there gonna keep hold of donovan or are the uh, starship people going to um destroy them what's gonna happen where are the missing starships what's gonna happen that's the whole thrust of the story and it just goes it's just an absolutely divine action adventure novel set in outer space with these people that uh the starship people and the uh Donna, the, the people on the outpost, and it's just full of horrors, like the, like the planet. Oh, those, so it's not just those two factions vying to win, but the planet itself is also a player. Is it going to be the ultimate winner? Will the planet just destroy everything? That's, it's just so cool. It's just absolutely great. I absolutely was... Just reading every word of this book, just absolutely hung on every word, and every character is great. I liked every character, but then again, Michael Gear does great characters. He goes, he he comes up with some great ideas for science fiction novels, and I've loved everything he's written so far. And this certainly doesn't disappoint at all. In fact, I don't know why, but they mention Hong Kong in here. And Hong Kong in the future, the way he puts it, it's like got thousand foot skyscrapers and, and Repulse Bay is the one place on Hong Kong Island that they haven't put skyscrapers, which I can see. I have been to Hong Kong and I've been to Repulse Bay and it's kind of almost that way now. Hong Kong Island is just nothing but skyscrapers and then a lovely beach. I don't know why that stuck out, but it did. Anyway, um, I absolutely think this is just great. I can't wait to see where this series goes for the next one, two, three, four, five books. 
the fifth, the sixth book is coming out in a couple months. And then I think that's the end of the series. I think it's six books long. I don't know. It might be longer. We'll see. Certainly book one is a fantastic 10 out of 10. I can't, if you love sci-fi, you have to get this.